Hello, welcome to Building a Better America, the Inflation Reduction Act special webinar. We'll get started in one moment. We're just going to let more people uh, enter the space as we are uh, excited to chat with you all today. Again, thank you so much for joining us for Building a Better America, the Inflation Reduction Act webinar. Uh, we are so excited for you to join us today. A few housekeeping rules. Uh, we would like for you to put any questions that you have in the Q&A function, uh, but please be mindful to not put any personal information there. Uh, this webinar is just to provide information on the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, this is not about advocacy. It is just to provide background information about the act uh, and how it impacts small businesses. And with that, I'm super excited to introduce to you all today, uh, the Deputy Chief of Staff to the Small Business Administration, uh, Kendall Corley. Mr. Corley has been selected to serve as the Deputy Chief of Staff for external engagement in the office of the Administrator of the at the U.S. Small Business Administration. In this role, Mr. Corley is responsible for providing a, a advice, guidance, and assistance to the administrator and other key agency officials in multiple program and areas related to external engagement. And with that, I would like to turn it over to Mr. Corley. Thank you. Uh, good day. Welcome to Building a Better America, a uh, small business resource community, a webinar series brought to you by the U.S. Small Business Administration. Today, we are having a discussion regarding the Inflation Reduction Act, and also discussing small business resources. Today, as we discuss the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, commonly referred to as the IRA, we will uh, center our comments and our conversation around education of the IRA, not necessarily advocacy. First up, we will have uh, one of our colleagues, uh, Ms. Julie Chavez Rodriguez, uh, Director of the Office of Intergovernmental Affairs at the White House. Julie currently serves as Senior Advisor and Assistant to the President and Director of White House Office Intergovernmental Affairs. Uh, Julie. Thank you so much, Kendall, for um, the warm introduction and for the critical work you're doing there at SBA. And um, thank, uh, thanks to all of you, um, you know, all of the small business owners and leaders for joining today's call. I see um, a good showing, uh, and I think we still have more folks joining as I speak. But um, just really bring you warm greetings from uh, the president, um, from the vice president, from the Biden-Harris administration. We are, you know, really excited um, just as we continue, I think, some real historic um, momentum and su historic success that we um, together have been able to accomplish. You know, thanks to the president's leadership, we have now recovered um, all of the jobs that were lost during the pandemic. Our economy has created nearly 10 million jobs since the president took office. The unemployment rate we've seen um, continued to drop. It went from, you know, a high of 6.4% when we were, um, you know, first coming into office when the president first took office to now 3.5%, um, you know, in 14 states across the country, um, they've seen the lowest unemployment uh, rates on record. And, um, you know, just yesterday, the president signed the, the CHIPS Act. I might be a little sunburned um, from being out on the South Lawn uh, with so many amazing um, leaders, including some that you'll hear from today. Um, and that's just unlocking and, and really unleashing um, the power and potential of American manufacturing um, here in, in the US. And so it's a real once in a generation effort to, to supercharge um, you know, manufacturing jobs on top of, again, the, the historic job creation we've seen. Um, we're also seeing gas prices continue to fall. Um, I think, you know, we're around three point uh, or three dollars and 99 cents a gallon, um, you know, uh, on average across the country. And today's um, news that we've had uh, zero percent inflation 
just really continues to show um, the kind of economic progress and that the plan that the president has put in place is really taking root. Um, and you know, while we see real wages going up, we know that there's still so much critical work to be done. And that's why we're here today to have a conversation with all of you about the Inflation Reduction Act, which we know will um, help to lower um, healthcare costs and prescription drug costs um, and energy costs. And we'll also have you know, important benefits for our small businesses um, and continue to strengthen them in numerous ways. And so we're just excited to really you know, um, share with you all, I think some of these important opportunities um, and to also hear from you to hear what is it that um, our small businesses and leaders really uh, care about and, and how is it that um, they really want to engage in um, continuing this again, really important and historic economic progress that we've seen. But just really quickly, the Inflation Reduction Act um, has some important and I think key components. One, it would cap seniors' um, out-of-pocket spending for prescription drugs to uh, $2,000 per year. It would save 13 million Americans covered under the Affordable Care Act, $800 um, per year on health insurance premiums and continuing um, that uh, ACA um, expansion um, that we were able to, to um, uh, you know, include in the American Rescue Plan. It takes the most aggressive action that we've seen um, on uh, climate change and addressing uh, the climate crisis that we've seen and really investing in a clean energy economy. Um, and finally, it pays for um, all of this by establishing a corporate uh, minimum tax um, and uh, ensuring that we are not raising a single penny um, of taxes on um, you know, our working families and those making um, $400,000 or less in the country. And so we're excited about, um, again, the opportunities that lie ahead. I think the president um, you know, says it all the time that we know there's still important work to be done, um, but we, you know, it's important that we take stock of the progress we've made to date and know that we are um, on the right track to continue to rebuild our economy, um, as the president says, from the bottom up and the middle out. So thank you all so much for your tireless support, and we look forward to our continued work together. Back over to you, Kendall. Thank you, Julie, and thank you for your hard work and partnership uh, with us. Uh, before we bring on uh, Mayor Turner, I just want to uh, bring greetings on behalf of Administrator Guzman, uh, who served as the voice of America's 33 million small businesses on President Biden's cabinet. Uh, Administrator Guzman has visited small businesses in more than 30 states and territories and spoken with hundreds of small businesses across the country. Uh, she has firsthand, she has seen firsthand the power and resilience of our uh, entrepreneurs across the country. Uh, just wanted to make sure we recognize and uh, thank Administrator Guzman for all of her hard work. Next up, we will have uh, one of our wonderful mayors, uh, Mayor Sylvester Turner of Houston. Uh, Mayor Turner was elected in 2015 uh, and reelected again in 2019 and currently serving in his second term as mayor. He is Houston's 62nd mayor. At this time, we'll welcome Mayor Sylvester Turner of Houston, Texas. Thanks, thanks, Kendall. And I also want to um, acknowledge Administrator Goldman and Julie and everyone else that's a part of um, um, this program today. Look, let me get right to it. The Inflation Reduction Act focuses on reducing costs, both fiscal and environmental, that Americans are paying. First, on the healthcare side, it keeps the expanded ACA subsidies that help people afford healthcare coverage. This is especially important in Texas, as we have the largest uninsured rate in the country. It also caps the expenses for Americans on Medicare, a program so many of our seniors on fixed income depends on, to spend no more than $2,000 a year out of pocket on prescription drugs. That's huge for so many in our community. It also puts a price cap on insulin for Medicare recipients at $35 a month. There is a disproportionate amount of people of color suffering from diabetes and having this cost at an affordable price can be a game changer. I will note that I really appreciate Senator Raphael Warnock's effort to apply that cap nationwide. But even for Medicare alone, it is a huge impact and savings for our seniors. 
on the climate action side and as chair of climate mayors, let me emphasize the $369 billion in clean energy and climate programs are badly needed. This is historic funding to mitigate climate change. It will help get us to a 40% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2030, a key goal set by President Biden, and it will drive business creation and enhancement in our country. This momentous commitment by the U.S. to fight the climate crisis will help us by reducing the deficit and combating inflation on the one hand, while helping to create businesses and jobs and reducing household expenses on energy, ensuring better health, climate resilience, and equity outcomes for everyday Houstonians. Houston has suffered seven federally declared disasters in the last seven years, and we cannot afford to stand still. We must move forward on the energy transition and reduce emissions. The transportation sector contributes to nearly half of Houston's greenhouse gas emissions. Not only does the bill keep the $7,500 tax credits for new EV purchases, but it also creates a new $4,000 tax credit for the purchase of a used EV. It also applies income gaps on those purchasing vehicles, making sure the tax credit goes to those who need it. These incentives for electric vehicles, a key provision in the IRA, will help improve our quality for the region while saving money and enabling access to clean mobility for Houston's households, a win for Houston's sustainability and resilience goals. Houston is focused on decarbonizing and weatherizing our buildings, shifting us away from the use of fossil fuels and helping prepare us for the next heat wave, hurricanes or winter storm. The rebates included in the IRA for electric appliances, home retrofits and tax credits to reduce energy leakages and in homes, including in this groundbreaking legislation will tangibly improve the lives of countless Houstonians by creating businesses, enhancing many of those businesses that are already in existence, saving money on energy bills while creating a healthier and more resilient home. The IRA includes the largest ever investment into urban and community forestry, $1.5 billion in total. This is extremely well aligned with Houston's efforts to make our most under-resourced communities more resilient to the devastating impacts of heat and increasing our tree canopy cover. We are well on our way to our goal of planting 4.6 million trees by 2030. And by the end of 2021, we were already at 1.2 million trees. The bill also contains $1 billion for fleet purchases on things like garbage trucks that my administration is going to closely follow and pull down funding for our solid waste department. Those federally declared disasters have taken a toll on our fleet and having clean energy vehicles for our solid waste drivers will help all Houstonians breathe these years. As it relates to small businesses, home remodeling companies and clean energy producers can profit from tax credits for consumers. These credits will subsidize purchases of equipment and installation services, in turn driving additional sales for companies that offer them. Credits can be transferred from consumers to a manufacturer or installer, which can help to drive sales. Of course, these energy savings benefit homeowners as well. Additional home energy rebates can reduce cost of installation projects for the contractors performing the work. The support for low carbon materials for federal projects and buildings is also significant. This means certified firms, city and federal, could benefit from federal projects involving low carbon concrete and construction materials. And lastly, as it pertains to the grants for environmental justice, small businesses might also benefit from upcoming projects related to climate change and air pollution. I will tell you, I'm excited by the RA about not only what it can do on driving down healthcare and dealing with climate change mitigation, but how it can incentivize the start of new businesses, enhance those businesses that still exist, and really be innovative in how it will be applied. So let me thank President Biden, Senator Schumer, and every senator, including Vice President Harris, for making this happen. Enjoy the rest of the seminar. Thank you, Mayor Turner, and uh, thank you for your leadership uh, and your partnership. Uh, now we'll hear from Mr. Rhett Butel, I'm sorry, 
uh, president of the Public Private Strategies Institute. Uh, Mr. Buttle is an entrepreneur, an advocate, and one of the most trusted leaders at the intersection of business and policy, uh, not only in Washington, D.C., but in this country. Uh, thank you, Rhett, and thank you for your partnership, and welcome. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Kendall, and it's been our pleasure at the Public Private Strategies Institute to host this ongoing series with the U.S. Small Business Administration. We appreciate you and the whole team who works with us to put it on. And let me add my thanks to Administrator Guzman, who's been out traveling across the country meeting with small businesses and has been a really important advocate and a voice for small business owners across the administration. And thank you, Mayor and Julie, for creating the time to be here. You could be a lot of places, but you've chose to be here today with the thousands of small business owners who you know, are busy running their businesses and really just trying to understand uh, what this legislation means for them. I just wanted to quickly drill down on three things uh, that you heard a little bit about from the mayor and Julie, but I wanted to sort of reemphasize because I think they're really at the heart of this legislation. The first is the tax provisions. For years, research has shown that small business owners really feel like the tax system has been leveled against them. As you can imagine, much larger businesses and corporations, some of which who uh, have not uh, paid federal tax or pay very low tax rates, are able to do so because of the investment that they're able to make in accountants uh, and really making sure that the system works for them. Uh, this is a huge step forward. The corporate minimum tax provides an important way to pay for a number of investments uh, that we need to make as a country, but it also provides more of a level playing field for small business owners. And so the corporate uh, minimum tax set at 15% in this law uh, is something that a lot of small business owners have uh, talked about before as it relates to creating a more equitable tax system. The second piece is really around healthcare. So much research shows in many of the organizations that we work with that healthcare is often the number one issue for small business owners and their employees. This act would do uh, a lot of important things that we heard about, uh, but two that I'll mention. One is extending the tax credits under the Affordable Care Act. For many small employers who aren't able to offer coverage, sometimes their employees are best able to get coverage through the marketplaces that were made available under the Affordable Care Act. The tax credits that are in the Affordable Care Act originally allowed employees to do that in a way that was affordable for them. It also allowed many entrepreneurs to purchase healthcare for the first time. The Inflation Reduction Act extends those tax credits or those subsidies and continues to make that possible. As well, for the first time, it deals with the rising cost of prescription drugs. Too often, so many small employers who able or who are able to eventually get over the hurdle of offering health insurance often hear from their employees that the cost of prescription drugs is just too high. We really think uh, the act, uh, the steps that this act would take uh, to allow Medicare to negotiate. Uh, with uh, prescri uh, around prescription drugs and a very limited set of prescription drugs, but those that are costing the highest volume in the system will really make an important step that we think will have ripple effects throughout the whole healthcare system and will help small business owners and their workers in the long run. And the last is the important investment that this act makes in our clean energy economy. Uh, too many small business owners are dealing with extreme weather that is impacting their business. They see the impact that climate change is having on the economy me. And this act really makes a strong, important down payment on some of the investments that we need to make as a country that will also provide entrepreneurial opportunities for small business owners who are thinking about the clean energy economy and how to be involved. It's an important step forward. It doesn't solve all of our issues, but as many small business owners are out there struggling to compete in the environment that they are working uh, to help create uh, jobs in our country, we know small business owners create two out of every three new jobs. This act can take a lot of important steps towards helping small business owners make life just a little bit easier for them, their employees, and their communities. And with that, it's now my pleasure to hand this conversation back to Kendall. Thanks so much for having us today, Kendall. Thank you, Rhett. And again, thank you for your partnership and uh, the great, great work that you do on behalf of small businesses. I want to introduce Mr. Uh, Shondell Newsom, founder of Some New Marketing, uh, co-chair of the Small Business for America's Future. Uh, Mr. Newsom uh, has a very impressive resume. He is a two-time winner uh, of, of our SBA awards, SBA uh, Nevada in 2008 Small Business Award and uh, Family-Owned Business of the Year in 2015. 
Uh, Mr. Newsom founded uh, his company as Newsom Marketing Enterprises back in 2006 and has over 30 years of experience in marketing and communications. Uh, he, he began his career in marketing graphic design as a teenager in Brooklyn, New York, working for a local, working for the local printing company, providing graphics and design for the local hip hop scene. Uh, we'll dive into a conversation now with uh, Mr. Newsom, but Mr. Newsom, welcome and thank you for joining us uh, on this webinar series. Thank you. It's my pleasure. All right. Thank you. So, uh, Mr. Newsom, uh, small businesses, uh, small business for America's future just released a national survey of small business owners showing that they strongly support the Inflation Reduction Act. Why is it popular with Main Street entrepreneurs? That's right, Kendall. Thank you. Um, we released a snap survey of 645 businesses, business owners done over the weekend showing that 74% of them support the act. The act helps with several issues to small businesses like the high cost of prescription drugs and stabilizing health insurance prices are just a few examples. For years, small business owners have said one of their number one cost is health care as an issue. Um, because these costs eat into our bottom line, it prevents them from competing for quality employees and hampers their growth. Thank you. Uh, one provision uh, in the legislation creates a 15% minimum tax for corporations. How do small business owners feel about that 15% tax? Well, our survey found that 79% of small business owners support creating a minimum 15% tax rate for large corporations, according to the survey. And that finding is not an outlier. Small businesses have long supported increasing the tax large corporations pay. Because the vast majority of small businesses are organized as pass-through entities rather than C corporations for tax purposes, Adjustments to the corporate tax rate do not affect 95% of the small businesses because they're not taxed as corporations. It's about being equitable more than anything else. The effective federal tax rate for small businesses is nearly 20%, while companies like Amazon federal tax rate was just 6%. And as you know, many large corporations pay even less or nothing at all. What small businesses want is a fair, tax code that creates a more level playing field for Main Street. Again, it's about being equitable um, more than anything else. Earlier, you mentioned drug costs. 85% uh, of small business owners support capping out-of-pocket drug costs for seniors at $2,000. How do caps on drug costs help small business owners like yourself? Well, you know, going back to the survey, according to our survey, 86% support allowing Medicare to negotiate prescription drug prices. That's because the high cost of prescription drugs and healthcare have been the top problem facing small business owners like, my, like myself for years. Drug costs are one of the prime drivers of high insurance costs. There is a pressing problem that affects the nation's economy. In the survey, and survey after survey, small business owners have told us rising health care costs negatively impact our ability to grow. It causes them to raise prices, think twice about growing opportunities, and it delays hiring. The good news is our survey shows that 73% of small business owners agree the act will ease inflationary pressure on small businesses by paying down the deficit and reducing costs of healthcare and prescription drugs, which limits businesses' ability to grow and compete in the market. Thank you. And uh, part of your information was formulated from the survey. Where can people learn more about the survey? They can visit the research page on our website, which is smallbusinessforamericasfuture.org. That's smallbusinessforamericasfuture.org. Thank you, Mr. Newsom, uh, and uh, thank you for your service and your partnership. Uh, Mr. Newsom, I failed to mention, is a uh, past tenure veteran of the Air Force, if I'm not correct. Uh, so thank you again, and 
Um, and congratulations on being a two-time SBA awardee. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you. At this time, we will uh, hear from uh, Mr. Mike Fung, who is our regional administrator in Region 10. Uh, Mike has a strong background in municipal government, currently is serving as our SBA regional administrator in Region 10. Mike? Great. Thanks, Kendall. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for giving me a few minutes uh, today. I appreciate the discussion so, for, so far. Uh, as Kendall mentioned, uh, you know, we want to make sure that uh, folks listening on the webinar today uh, and all across the country are aware of uh, the programs and efforts that we have available through uh, our agency uh, in uh, intending to support you as an entrepreneur and your small business uh, development needs. You know, Administrator Guzman often uh, reminds us that as an agency, you know, we want to be as innovative as the entrepreneurs that we serve. So important for us to make sure that our staff, our resource partners, others are up to date on the current issues facing small business owners, uh, whether they be uh, topics such as today around inflation or supply chain issues or worker shortages. Our intent would be to be able to uh, have our folks uh, up to date on best practices uh, and advice uh, that they can provide you uh, to meet your business challenges. So that's why we're constantly assessing and improving our programs. And I just wanted to quickly run through what most folks probably already know is in sort of the core portfolio of offerings uh, from the SBA. But just as a reminder, one, uh, access to capital, uh, you know, funding in the form of SBA backed fixed low interest loans, uh, investment capital, uh, grants, uh, disaster related assistance, you know, we are often able to make working capital available to small business owners that may not otherwise be able to secure a traditional commercial loan from a bank. So if you are uh, thinking about growth and expansion, which as I travel across my region in the Northwest, I'm hearing a lot of cautious optimism toward growing uh, small businesses. Uh, now's the time to, to talk with one of our uh, staff talk with our resource partners and look at uh, potential uh, financing and funding. Uh, the second area of our core uh, programming is focused on business counseling. And one thing that I hear in talking to small businesses is, is there's just incredible value uh, to just be able to have a thought partner or someone to bounce some questions off of and get some advice around guidance related to business planning uh, and business needs. You know, we have a vast network of advisors who can provide you consultative services at typically no cost or very low cost. And we don't like to say free because the tr truth is, is that you've already prepaid really through taxpayer dollars for these services. And so I really encourage you to consider seeking out a small business development center, a women's business center or veterans business opportunity center or any a number of our resource partners that, uh, that can be able to provide uh, assistance uh, and as you think about your long-term, short-term uh, business planning needs. And finally, uh, what I like to refer to are, are revenue opportunities and programs that we have available through SBA uh, that are designed and intended to help you think about how to grow market access and grow revenues. Especially now uh, with the passage of the infrastructure law, there's an incredible amount of funding that's going to start flowing through states and local governments for contracting opportunities that represent great business opportunities and increased revenues. Now, either from direct uh, service delivery uh, and direct contracting opportunities from state government, uh, local government agencies, or indirect economic benefits from these projects, they'll start uh, getting off the ground in our communities. You know, we and our partners can give you the assistance to get certified and get eligible for these contracts, but also given statutory set-asides and goals from the Biden-Harris administration, you know, we can uh, ensure that small businesses are getting a significant piece of the action as it relates to these new, new funds that are available. Now, rather than giving you multiple links and, and multiple phone numbers for where to find this information, I'm just going to give you one very simple uh, web address to, to, to find this at. sba.gov backslash district. Uh, and that, and again, sba.gov backslash district. And the reason I highlight that is that we have 68 local district offices across the country. 
there's someone near you locally that can, that all you have to do is find them and we'll be able to either direct you to the resource that you need or be able to give you some consultative support and thought and thinking over the phone or, or in response to an email. So just visit us at sba.gov backslash district, find the district closest to you uh, and, uh, and we'll make sure that, um, that we provide you the support that you're looking for. So anyhow, Kendall, thanks for a couple of minutes. I appreciate the conversation today. And uh, hopefully uh, uh, we'll be hearing from folks. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you for your service to our small business in the Northwest uh, part of the country. Uh, thank you to our speakers today for sharing their perspectives and for educating us on all, uh, ed educating us on the Inf Inflation Reduction Act. Also a big thank you to the small business owners joining us today uh, in our audience and to all of you who, who have joined us. One of the goals of the IRA uh, is to uh, help fight inflation by reducing the deficit by additional 300 billion beyond the 1.7 uh, trillion deficit reduction already uh, that has occurred this year under President Biden. Over two decades, the bill will reduce debt by nearly $2 trillion. Um, <clears throat> the Info the uh, RA Act of 2020 is critically important and its proposed provisions make significant headway in supporting America's 33 million small businesses. A strong and stable economy requires a healthy small business community that has the tools in it uh, need to, needed to survive and thrive. On behalf of Administrator Guzman, thank you again for joining us today for this informative briefing. Thank you.